to November the 15th. Good goodness. 2023. I'm going to be your host tonight, Dana Durnfrit. We are in take seven. My goodness. As soon as you miss a few days, it's like hellish trying to get yourself back up to cruising speed. So we're just going to jump right into it. It always takes me an extra minute because I'm super stupid. <clears throat> so when you look at these buildings, any nuclear scientist on the planet, this was the original day. And there wasn't a nuclear scientist on the entire planet that didn't look at these buildings and say, oh my God, reactor three and four, reactor cores and fuel pools are gone. There's not a single person. And when the experts came out and said, doomsday like radiation release of the fire in the pool at Unit 4 would be a global catastrophe, well, they, they, that expert knew that the fire <coughs> had already taken place. And anybody with any kind of a soul would have known that Reactor 4 is gone. And these were 190-foot buildings, and Reactor 3 is gone. Reactor 2 is gone, Reactor 1 is gone. But in particular, at the top of the buildings were two fuel pools. Because you don't have a repository in Japan or anywhere else worldwide, they were stuffed with reactor cores, 40 years of reactor cores. So think of each building as 10 reactor cores. And now you're getting close to it. But reactor 3 was a mixed oxide fuel. My apologies. Reactor 3 was a mixed oxide fuel reclaim uranium plutonium reactor. And it was like a firecracker went off, right? And so this is a frame for reactor 1. Reactor 1 blew up. And they, they confirmed full meltdown at all three reactors right away. But the explosion that occurred at one could generate missiles that endanger the containment integrity. At the top of the building, the missiles they're talking about were the reactor cores, and they were stored in assemblies in underwater. It's a special type of water. And that's very important, by the way, because they sprayed salt water on it after. The only reason would do it because all the fuel was gone. So this is the bottom piece right here. That piece right there is that top piece right there. And that top piece right there is taller than two of these reactors stacked on each other. And that ultimately there's four pieces to cover these 190-foot, 65-meter, 19-story uh, tall buildings. These are 150 feet wide, 50-meter wide buildings. And this might give you some context. You can see this person right here is quite a long ways away. But you can see how enormous they actually are. When, when you look at that, it's very deceiving, right? And But there was no mistake that originally they knew the reactor cores were gone, and they knew the two fuel pools, every nuclear academic, every university with a nuclear department knew that immediately. Every government agency, the, the Department of Energy, and everybody else, uh, all United Nations agencies, the International Atomic Energy Agency, UNSCLEAR, ERPA, the ICRP, all would have known the reactor core and the fuel pools were gone the minute they seen that original picture. That's the original picture over there of reactor three. Okay. And so I have to start off with this, but in particular this time I had a lot of trolls because I've been sick for the last uh, three quarters of a month. And I've been in hospital a lot. And so the trolls have decided now's the time. I'm down. I can't defend myself. Now's the time to come out and run me over because I can't get out of the way. And I know that might sound, a little, if you're not familiar with the subject, a little, a little uh, crazy right now, but hear me out. Now, since August the 24th, uh, July the 13th, rather, of 2023, the new narrative, there was a new narrative that showed up, backed up, and most likely cooked up by the International Atomic Energy Agency, which is United Nations, which is 195 militaries. <coughs> 
The author is a professor of the Department of Nuclear Quantum Engineering at COS, which is South Korea's biggest shaker and mover. Now, he's a Department of Nuclear and Quantum Engineering professor. And so his version now is this never happened, and that's everybody's version. He, he's the first English version we found of that narrative. And he said that the nuclear meltdowns, and there's multiple nuclear meltdowns and fuel pools with decades of reactor cores that are the, the exact equivalent of a reactor core melting down each. He said it's like throwing three cubes of three grams of sugar into the sea. This was translated from Korean, by Koreans, by the way, uh, and from the major media. So first off, that's simply not true. You can't equate a nuclear meltdown. And this is infinitely, these are at least 100 times worse than Chernobyl because Chernobyl was a graphite reactor, which is completely different compared to pure uranium, pure plutonium reactors. And that these reactors were very big. And at the time, they were considered one of the biggest sites in the world for energy from nuclear. The entire site had six reactors. But they were big reactors. Okay, so they say it's like the discharge is like three grams of sugar, but they also bring up the word tritium. And he said it's like 2.2 grams of tritium, but that's all it got out of four reactors. I'm going to show you two of my apologies. And there's eight fuel pools missing, and each fuel pool would equal to around five reactor cores and around 50 Chernobyls. So they built these contraptions over these buildings. The buildings should have been razzed all the way to the ground, but they built these contraptions there to manipulate you. And so you see in the Western media, you also Australia, New Zealand, United Kingdom, Europe, come out and claim that they're in the building in 2013, 2014, when the building actually didn't exist. And we know it didn't exist because the buildings blew up. And, and another one that you're... I showed you a little touch of earlier was reactor one. It blew up. But reactor three, that that was that was undeniable gone. And every nuclear academic on the entire planet, bar nobody, bar no academic, uh, and and no engineer either in these disciplines would have said that the fuel pool and the reactor cores are still in the building. But the, the media come out and insisted in 2014. And, and what they done was they built these contraptions and they were pretending they were in that building, Reactor 4, which doesn't exist. And you can see they left all the debris. And when I zoomed in, like, again, you won't see these pictures anywhere else. Reactor 3 actually blew up. And so they built this containment on top of buildings, but they don't physically touch the buildings. And so the detonations were modeled in the fallout. This is a 20-day model to a 32-day I started at 20 days of radioactive fallout. This is France's model, and they're asserting it's around uh, a million to 10 million becquerels of cesium-137 per cubic meter of radioactive air. So it covers the entire planet. So think of a snowstorm, and so you can see it, right? And just, but just think about that the snow never melts, and that after 20 days, the whole planet is covered in a snowstorm that snow never melts, and this goes on for millions of years, and it never stops snowing, then you're actually understanding 80 years of nuclear, but Fukushima was a pulse event where it lost an enormous amount of the inventories. And each building was worse than all nuclear uh, disasters worldwide combined. And there was four of these buildings. And they hoodwinked you. They, they built a contraption that you can't physically do. Nobody got up there and walked around and done it, and, and by proxy, nobody went inside of it. But that's not what the experts come out and try to convince you of. Now, I built, the division I ran built nuclear fuel racks for boiling water reactors exactly like Fukushima. Then there was no way he didn't know the building to the right was missing all the inventories because he built the racks for the fuel rods that were in the fuel pools. So I put 
he he's promoting the picture behind me. Now I put that picture there, but he's been in all the media promoting that. The plume to your left, the bottom one is 27 days. That's another model from another institution and in countries, the expert countries. So the fish lean out are saying nothing got out only three grams worth of sugar worth of radiation, but sugar and radiation got nothing in common. But the International Atomic Energy Agency, the, the authority so-called on the planet, has come out and with that same assertion. And they have people, they say, at the site looking for tritium. In 2019, they acknowledged there was 105,000 on-site storage locations throughout the prefectures that held around 30 million one-ton bags of radiation. And South Korea is going to develop a tritium testing method, which is coming with the original cover story, by the way, of South Korea for seafood, tritium. And then... What they claim they're going to release each year is equal to taking that little bit of flakes of salt, which is 1.232 grams, and dividing it 22 times. And one of those out of 22 is what they say is going to be released in tritium each year. Now, remember, they picked up 30 million one-ton bags. That's one-ton bag in the back of a one-ton truck because that's all it can carry. A one-ton bag in the back of a one-ton truck bumper to bumpers, five rows of traffic around the entire planet, and that the food was banned by 55 countries in 14 prefectures. So to suggest that only tritium came out of the buildings is um, criminal on a whole different level. So just to make sure we're all on the right page, because you'll never see this anywhere else, that's all four sides of reactor four, all four sides of it. They stripped it down, with the homeless and the destitute and remote control vehicles, and they put that contraption on it. And the same thing with reactor three, that the buildings obviously should have been scrapped to the ground because there's nothing left. And to the right is that building right here. Now, under the ground, the steam, where the react some of the reactor cores from, say, reactor two for sure, and uh, maybe reactor one, reactor core, because the fuel pool was blown out of reactor one. But the reactor core, we believe, went down into the earth. And the earth uh, has cracked open, and that the steam to your right was 40 times TEPCO speed, which was a ridiculous speed in the first place. And that the steam coming out of the ground in six places was measured at st by stationary Geiger counters, uh, 10 sievers per hour, where that's their max number they can read. And so once they hit that number, they have to be replaced because they have to be recalibrated. But I mean, if you hit 10 sieverts, something is in 10 sieverts, you can no longer <laughs> use it. It's like when they tell you they're using a robot. Well, the minute they use a robot or a robot dogs, it goes into a hot zone. You can never go near the robot again. And if it's in electronics, most likely the robot will fail. So the cover story is pretty impressive. It's been going on for a very long time, 80 years of the same lies, and the current generation of journalists have nothing to do with journalism. All right, my apologies. That's, um, I'm under siege all the time, but I'm trying to educate anybody that are trying to understand the subject, you're, you're forced to come here because you're not going to hear the truth anywhere else. No one's going to show you the documentation. And there's only a couple of people, less than a, hand, less than a handful worldwide, that is speaking some of the facts. And so I have an educational program providing the documentation. And so I've been under siege because, and I've been in the hospital, can't defend myself by claiming I'm a lawyer, and I just showed you what the lies are they say I'm saying. They're saying everything I told you so far is a lie. And, uh, you know, how long would it take to uncover a lie if I was lying? Why don't you just explain the lie that I'm telling? Why, why don't they show...
why don't they just show the facts? So the last poll we had is the nuclear industry's 80 years of endless radioactive fallout behind the supercell storms. And so once the radioactive fallout dispersed itself, it never stopped coming out. So, but after about 20 days in this model, what you notice is everything is covered in, f the coloring is considered radioactive fallout. That's 20 days right there. And this, this never stops. And so you can't see the fallout coming out because it's still coming out like that, but you can't see it because after 20 days, the whole planet is covered, but it's actually still coming out. And there's, this is a Norwegian Institute for Air Research. And so fallout is global warming. And what I mean by that is you've got 80 years of these plumes covering the planet. They never go away, and they're pulsing energy at the speed of light, or just shy of the speed of light. The gammas, the alphas, the neutrons, the betas, and proxy, the x-rays. are They pulse energy in every direction. The snowflakes, think of a snowstorm covering the planet, and it pulses energy at the speed of light every snowflake. That's global warming. And that dries out the ground. It kills the bacteria, the fungus. It, it, it uh, poisons the species. <coughs> and it poisons the species. And uh, it kills the bacteria and the fungus. And so once you get rid of that, the species, the forest dries out because they can't survive without the bacteria and the fungus. And so once that happens, it no longer soaks up water, so you have these flash floods. But after a while, because the foliage and the litter is not breaking down, then when you get lightning strikes, of course, that lights it up. And now you have this huge foliage and litter that would normally never exist because the bacteria and the fungus would have created an environment for the ecosystem to break it down. This stuff is not normal for forest fires. So it wafers up, it's on fire, big pieces, and it drifts around and it's so dry because there's no moisture and the ground doesn't suck up the moisture anymore. And not only that, it destroys the glaciers and so that cold water is not running down to the lakes and the streams and the estuaries. But what's going on is the indoctrination machine is busy as usual, it's coming at you from thousands and thousands and thousands of directions. And every school and university and all of Hollywood constantly, the Hulk, the Spider-Man, is reinforcing these uh, propaganda key points. And so people get sucked into this destructive way of thinking where there's no critical skills. So when I say... Is the nuclear industry's 80 years of endless radioactive fallout beyond the supercell storms worldwide? It's because I can prove it. <sighs> so now we're ready to talk about news. <laughs> <coughs> That's how crazy the nuclear industry is. I have to go through that whole preamble to make sure absolutely everybody's on the right page and to reinforce the documentation. And if you can beat my narrative, go ahead and challenge my narrative. Look forward to hearing from it. I don't mind learning if I made a mistake. But this is, my narrative is based upon documentation. And so if you're going to come out with your narrative, make sure you have the documentation and not from the public relations firms to back it up because it's too easy for me to beat you. So former fracking site <clears throat> could lead the UK renewable revolution. Could lead, it absolutely positively would lead if it was given half a chance geothermal energy. For the first time in the United Kingdom, abandoned gas well could be getting second life source of geothermal energy. So these all, endless amounts of gas wells and oil wells we got drilled on the planet could all be geothermal energy. Could Geothermal, there's Something like 2 billion times the energy we currently use right under our feet worldwide. Worldwide. An underrated little city that never gets above 15 degrees, 15 degrees Celsius, but it's sunny 24 hours a day for months. It's in Iceland, which 
I think they had around 1,400 earthquakes in one day recently. Not big ones, but earthquakes. So they got, they're like kind of a perfect spot for geothermal. But they also have the land of the midnight sun, where for months it's pure daylight. And so they could really take advantage of a, ge of a solar industry there also. And, but I mean, what an amazing place where you live and in the background this earth is throwing up liquid molten lava. That's the Reykjavik, I believe. Brown's University drills a thousand foot holes to test geothermal energy to heat the campus buildings. It's best thought of as kind of a thermal battery. It's perpetual energy. Why wouldn't you use geothermal? Why would you consider nuclear? I, I would think it seems criminal to consider nuclear. Geothermal has been hidden away from the majority of the population. A new type of climate-friendly energy is coming online in the U.S. It's not a new type of climate-friendly energy. Geothermal has been around longer than everything else. And uh, underground reservoirs of hot water is expanding it to exploit dry, hot rocks underground, new technologies. The universities are not even trying. There's, and when you see them, the results are always spectacular. It sits on bedrock and reaches temperatures of 465 degrees. Why would you bother with nuclear or gas or oil or coal? And by the way, gas, oil, and coal emissions don't create plumes that covers the planet. And the plumes that they do create close by don't pulse energy almost at the speed of light every second for millions of years or even for a second. So if you think about a turkey in the oven, you can cook a turkey if you wanted to lower one down. So we don't see, we see every university with nuclear focused on nuclear energy, which is just uh, fuel production for the military industrial complex, right? They need nuclear fuel rods to go through a cycle to extract the plutonium for their bombs. If you don't have nuclear power plants, you can't have nuclear weapons, in other words. Could thermal energy be New York's best shot at reaching its climate goals? New York, the nuclear industry, actually enacted a law that says you couldn't drill deeper. I think it was 500 feet, or I don't even think it was that deep, or it was considered a mine, and so they couldn't put geothermal, and they had to fight for your decades to change the law so that they can drill and tap into the geothermal. That was the nuclear industry enacted those laws. Investing underground networks of heat pumps is in the Big Apple's best bet at reducing its greenhouse gas emissions. Well, it's the smartest, easiest, simplest, mindlessly safest thing you could do. Just drill a bunch of holes. Miss Universe candidates visit the geothermal plant in El Salvador, which I think was a great move, right? That was a brilliant move because they're public speakers, right? And it's very unusual. They usually keep them away from that. You'll see the current America, Miss America, she visits only nuclear plants. She don't visit geothermal plants. Africa is going to overtake Europe in geothermal capacity, and so Europe is vehemently pro-nuclear. And they have an endless opportunities for geothermal. They can run their whole country and their countries on geothermal. Why is geothermal heating and cooling so expensive? Well, the artificial inflation after Russia's war now has driven up the price of commodities to extremes. It's very hard to compete. And nuclear has an unlimited uh, pocket. And not only that, the technology for geothermal is not expensive. The only thing expensive is the drilling. And that new techniques for drilling, one is using uh, water 
at 25,000 PSI ahead of the drill bits to bust up the rocks. And it also has a hydraulic hammer. So the, the water jets at 25,000 PSI will, will cut the rocks below it. The hammer will pound it. And then the drill bit will go right through it. It's a very, very, it's like 10 times quicker than a conventional drill. But uh, you can solve the problem. If you put uh, 100 universities to work to solve any of these problems, you'll solve it. But you can't do that with nuclear. Because you have thousands of universities working on nuclear. And they're still working on the designs from the 20s and 30s. The cost of installing geothermal is six times higher than the traditional heat pumps. Well, so so that's not ex we're not the heat pumps are cheap because they're very shallow ground, right? So, like when you, when you put it in that context, you because most people just read the headline, so then they just get turned off by that, right? But the argument is not based up on comparison of gas and oil and coal versus geothermal. It's based on geothermal versus geothermal, shallow geothermal versus deep, high-energy geothermal. And, and it's completely doable. It's not that it's out of the league. Uh, you'll pay, it'll pay for itself in about 10 years. The, the most expensive version will pay for itself in around 10 years. And so in 10 years, is it better to have free energy or is it better to just give the money to the gas, oil, and coal industry and the nuclear industry? Danny Line Energy calls for switch to geothermal, advocating to make this the last winter burning fossil fuels. The very last winter burning fossil fuels. It's quite quite uh, impressive when you look at geothermal. Why would you bother with nuclear? Calls for experts to evaluate Swiss geothermal projects. Well, geothermal is everywhere. If you dig deep enough, you're going to hit it, guaranteed. And you're going to hit the temperatures that you need to replace any of the conventional energy. And the technology would be simple if the uh, nuclear industry wasn't... Um, how would you put it? Just bear with me. It's better, sometimes it's better to show examples, or a lot of the times. It's better to show the example if you can. Some examples I'm not always uh, staying on top of. So bear with me. There we go. Oh, well, maybe not. I thought I had it that time. There we go. There's so many. So much information. Every bit of it is so important. I'm like a pack rat for documentation. Nuclear and coal lobbies threaten to scupper renewables in South Africa. Nuclear and coal lobbies going to scuttle renewables. Because renewables... Is there anything that makes any sense? But it's it's the industries have control of your governments and, you, and particularly your universities and your medias. Manitoba had to cover installation of five thousand geothermal heat pumps, and so the big energy producers in Manitoba were upset. Like we're going to lose money. You do that, people are not going to buy our product. Well, those industries are like the tobacco industry when you compare it. Why, you know, you, everybody's complaining about there's not enough to go around, but heat pumps are, are going to, you know, keep your temperature in your house at, say, around 65 degrees. They're around $5,000. You only got to drill down about 100 feet or something. It's, it's an unbelievably stupid, simple thing to do on top of that. And effective, right? It keeps your house, like your basement, for instance, will keep it at 65 degrees. So you only got to bump the temperature another 5 degrees and it's quite comfortable. That's in cold, adverse conditions we're talking about on top of that. But 65 degrees, when it's minus, um, 
minus, um, I'm talking about Celsius, when it's minus, say, 20 outside and 65 inside, why wouldn't you do that? For a lousy five or six or seven thousand dollars. Can we count on renewable energy? Four ways wind, solar, and water can power the, the U.S. But the geothermal, why would you look at anything else? Now, you can back up, you know, with wind and solar. You can do that for a house right now on Amazon for around $1,200. So you always got extra energy if you're dependent upon, or you're trying to be independent. Because the energy prices keeps climbing up, it'll be the best thousand dollars you ever spend. Department of Energy expects two new geothermal plants to start operation soon, but they could have been operating for the last hundred years. You know, every community can be running geothermal. Every community, like that's say five thousand people or under, could easily, simply, by just pulling the money together, uh, the houses in the community could be up and running on geothermal energy within about a two-year period. And then if they committed to like paying the same payments uh, as they're paying now for 10 years, then after that they would have free energy for the community. In fact, um, it's about $5 million a megawatt. A megawatt powers a 1,000 homes. But price can come down quickly, too, again, on geothermal. You just got to conquer the deep drilling. The drill bit market for geothermals for the next uh, 20 years, or not even that, till 2030, I think. Uh, yeah, till 2030 was $50 billion. Because that's the only thing they're having problems with is the drill bits itself. And again, some of the solutions were to use... Uh, 25,000 PSI water jets split the rocks and uh, hammers, you know, water-driven pneumatic uh, hammers and then the drill bits behind that and then that's the end of your problem. As soon as they mass produce that system, which is not a very difficult system, it could be enhanced. If the Department of Energy threw a nickel at it, it would be ready to go in no time at all. Anybody would have access to it. The Philippines, the experimental geothermal lab taps bedrock heat for green power. It's like all of a sudden somebody woke up yesterday and said, well, there's, there's energy on our feet. But the reality of it is many, many people have been screaming that for many, many decades and have been silenced by the media themselves. Geothermal energy not to be as cheap as solar, unlikely to be as cheap as solar, rather. Of course it'll be as cheap as solar. It'll be cheaper than solar. And who cares? It's 24 hours a day energy. Solar is not, right? It would be if you use storage, like pumped hydro. Like if you use what they call water batteries, you have two, two ponds, and you pump water up to the second one, and when the sun's not shining, or the wind's not blowing, water runs down, right, and fills in the gap. But an even better solution was uh, to dig mine shafts and compress air at about 120 PSI down into the mine shafts. And that the heat you generate, you can reclaim it and save it and store it um, with simple techniques now, like sand even, it can hold the heat seven, 800 degree temperatures for weeks. And then when you're gonna unpack the compressed air, you can use that heat to make it expand even quicker. All of this is already well established. And all you need is a country to pull the trigger on it, and within five or ten years, that country will be independent of the energy mafias. Iceland geothermal energy is used to grow cucumbers. Here in Canada and Alberta, we covered there uh, last month bunch of geothermal stuff. Um, I can't remember. It was ridiculous amount, 25,000 pounds of strawberries a month or something, or a week or a day. I can't remember what it was. It was ridiculous to geo uh, geothermal greenhouses. 
And you're talking up there, it gets minus 35. Uh, wind chills and uh, are much worse. And they've already shown that geothermal can conquer. They used to, you know, I'm on the east coast of Canada, and the original greenhouses here were 10 feet under the ground. So they worked all year round. There's no frost can reach them down there, right? And so they would put a, like a tent over it, a greenhouse tent over a 10 foot deep, 12 foot deep hole and the steps down to it and 30 feet long or something and they would grow food there all year round. So easy to grow tomatoes, it's so easy to grow peppers, for instance. Um, joint ventures for g deep geothermal energies. 200 megawatts, that's 200,000, enough for 200,000 Vietnamese households. So that's a huge city, 200,000 people, right? Problem solved. Why are you looking at disgusting, despicable disease factories known as nuclear power plants? Eastland Group raises capital support geothermal projects in New Zealand. New Zealand is mo mostly renewable energy, for goodness sakes, on top of that. Kentucky Airport launches geothermal systems for heating and cooling the airports, the largest of its kind of any airport in the United States. But every airport, every large, every, every coliseum, every stadium, every university, every hospital, Every school could easily run on geothermal. And then after about 10 years, look at all the extra money they're going to have, right, to further the education of the victims we send there. Constipated Party 28 is going to host the UAE to extract, or UAE host, is going to extract 40 billion barrels of oil and gas over 70 years. That's oil and gas, not, and they have um, natural gas too, right? They're talking about a ridiculous amount. 38.2 trillion cubic feet of gas remaining. So there's no shortage. Here on the east coast of Canada, they've been capping oil and gas off the east coast for 45 years. And they only have a couple of oil rigs recent over the last decade that are out there extracting it, but they've been capping it and sealing it for 45 years out there. It's nothing but oil and gas, 200 miles offshore, a million square kilometers of oil and gas out there. There's no shortage. The industry has seized upon this opportunity of endless radioactive folly, which is on purpose. Like, all nuclear power plants are surrounded by farms. That statement should terrify you. Israel is willing to use nuclear bombs whenever it's in danger, security and nuclear policy specialists. Here we go, we're into the nuclear cycle now. I wanted to start off in geothermal because of, I got all these attacks against me and I've been in hospital a lot and who knows how long I'll be around. And so I wanted to make sure that the world understands there, there is a solution, nuclear ain't will never be a solution. Nuclear will always be your problem. Well, Israel has dropped the equivalent on Gaza, on Palestinians, on women and children in particular, and elderly is 90% is of the casualties, or 95, or almost 100% of the casualties. The equivalent of around seven Hiroshima bombs in the TNT equivalency. Uh, it was confirmed after the first couple of weeks, Just we're, and we're only talking about the Air Force, we're not talking about the artillery, there's 4,000 tanks, we're not talking about those D DU munitions, uh, 155 millimeter depleted uranium rounds, the Dolran, depleted uranium low-level radioactive material that they're just pyrophoric, you catch as far as going towards the, the ambulances and the schools and the hospitals and the homes and releases the radiation as plumes into the environment. So they contaminate all the farmland, all the water sources, and 
the structures, the remains, a lot of people go back into the structures because uh, a quarter million homes have been destroyed. They'll go back there looking for children's blankets and, and uh, utensils, and all this will be contaminated with uh, depleted uranium fallout. So uranium, plutonium, americium, neptunium, strontium. You can't separate that because this stuff has already gone through a chain reaction. Oh, new scale small modular reactor promised cheaper nuclear power but cost soar. We talked about that when they showed up years and years ago, right? This is exactly what we said. Look, right away the cost will double and then it'll go crazy after that. So the deal to build a point sized nuclear reactors is cancelled. So we've been vindicated, haven't we? We wasted all that money, energy, effort, time, monetary on something we knew was going to fail and that was only simply meant as a shell game in the nuclear industry as another way to steal money from your communities and your country and your loved ones and just to rob you and enslave you and stop you from coming up with real solutions. Like the geothermal and the storage I talked about earlier. The project subsidized by the U.S. Department of Energy, Department of Energy, sought to revive the U.S. nuclear industry, but its cost is more than doubles, $9.3 billion. This is just something that they absolutely understood. It was just a way of robbing and getting that money. And so the communities that they hoodwinked, and this is supposed to be what was the name of this project? Uh, the Low Carbon Project or something. I think it comes up in this other topic here. Nuclear reactor deal collapse challenges port in Portland, Oregon. Or Portland's uh, is in Washington, this one, I think. I can't remember. I've had a lot of dealings with this uh, the new scale over the years, over the last decade in particular. They've been around uh, a long time, by the way, and they've never produced nothing. And uh, they're just what they—they've called me up, and uh, they've—they're just despicable people. And it's—it's it's really something you can write a book on how evil these people actually are, an entire book, and you—you you barely scratch the surface on how evil these people. Yeah, the Carbon Free Power Project, which the was called the CFPP and was considered when they first showed up in the lexicon in the narrative of small modular reactors it was really clear what was going on and now we see the reality right and and we've covered them the whole time haven't we over the last decade end of an era navy completes dismantling of nuclear ships refueling barge nuclear ships refueling barge Great big stupid disease factory on the ocean on top of that. Former surface ship support barge was converted. Uh, until its decommissioning in 2016, seven years ago, the barge was an integral component. So it took them seven years to tear that thing apart. And they most likely contaminated that part of the country. Initially called a prototype waterborne expended fuel, and the fuel's not expended. The fuel's only used about 2%. The word expended is only put there to hoodwink you and, and make you complacent in increments over time. The, the fuel is, see, once it's 2%, the fuel is so brittle, now it has trillions and trillions of cracks, and they're releasing, because this thing is splitting atoms. The minute it goes through the chain reaction, it starts splitting atoms. You can take it out two minutes later, and that will split atoms into the environment forever. And there's no containment in your fuel pools, by the way. And that's what they have on these ships are the fuel pools. And they're hemorrhaging into the environment wherever they're too. And so you're going to put the Navy in charge of something like that, then you guarantee to complete whatever community you're in. You're, it's guaranteed. There's zero possibility they're going to do anything outside of cheat and manipulate the population into thinking that they did it properly. 
One percent of the platform's low residual radioactivity is contained in the spent water pool. One percent. Now that one percent is a catastrophic amount, though. And at the fuel pool, they had to fill it every day because it boils off uh, probably a hundred thousand liters or more a day, and each liter is going to be saturated with anthropogenic man-made radioactive isotopes. No matter where it, this disease factory was. And it was parked there for a while. The fuel pools would have been full originally. And that, that whole community would have been showered constantly in an invisible plume that you can't see it or smell it or hear it or touch it or feel it or perceive it. And they brought it 1,500 miles so they can pollute your community was able to complete the process of demolishing the final component. And I, th I, think, I think demolish is the right words. Canada has the emergency alert uh, going off today at 10.55 and where I'm to. So I had all the audios turned down on my phone today. <laughs> Scumbag, you can't trust them, see? 32 foot Deep compartment that comprised of 2,500 tons, two, I'm sorry, 2,500 tons of steel reinforced high density concrete that is bombarded with gammas, x rays, neutrons, and betas, and alphas, rather. The Navy, and by proxy, the x rays, the Navy's highlighted that approximately 8,000 tons of waste material were safely packaged and shipped. And so why would you insert the word safely? Well, first off, the waste you're talking about is splitting atoms. So the entire time that is not contained, it's going to be releasing the atoms into the environment. All fuel pools are not contained. There is no containment. So they put it in a building, and they got union workers there sitting in, in these machines getting incredible doses of radiation from just airborne. And it took them seven years, look, of doing this kind of stuff. And because no one's able to find out what they're up to because of the secrecy laws, then a lot of that gets recycled back into your communities, particularly schools and impoverished residential buildings and stuff like that. U.S. Navy and your utensils and kids' toys. U.S. Navy recently announced it will use a commercial shipyard in a similar project to dismantle the Enterprise, the USS Enterprise which is a great big nuclear disease factory. Nuclear brinksmanship returns to Europe. The Dutch F-35 now is, I believe now it's armed with nuclear weapons to counter Russia with the Belarus. Now, you can't use these nukes, so what's the point of doing it? Oh, Dana, well, it's a deterrent, yeah, but you can't use it. You don't need a deterrent for something you can't use. The world is connected, so the condemnation is immediate, right, if, if it was used. So the incentive to use it is lost, which is usually secrecy, right? Well, nobody will know we used it. That was the Cold War mantra, right? And there's an indication the United States is assisting the Dutch F-35, not the not United States, but the nuclear industry. And the nuclear industry is basically one great big happy family worldwide of genocide machines. That's what they are. The people themselves are just, they're human and species-hating machines. They're not like humans. And the NATO, of course, shouldn't exist. It was created in response to the Soviet Union. The big, and they were a big bully, right? It was 28 countries versus the Soviet Union. So once the Soviet Union collapsed, which was engineered, then NATO should have been collapsed at the same time because you can't leave an organization like that. You now you got 30 countries currently, and if you look up NATO, it says on its website, NATO, 30 military industrial complexes. It's not 30 countries, it's 30 militaries. 
That's how they describe it on their site. Even though the Netherlands does not have a nuclear weapons, NATO's nuclear sharing doctrine enables members without nukes of their own to take part in NATO's nuclear... Oh, you don't got a nuclear weapon? Come join NATO. We'll give you a couple. You can't use them, though. But it empowers the idiots, the idiots all of a sudden, who... That's, they're only going to allow in, and when I say the idiots, it's just the, the people that are willing to destroy a country for a paycheck. That's the very definition of an idiot, right? Because they can get a paycheck anywhere else. BlackRock just unleashed nuclear winter sparking, and I disrespect him for using the word nuclear winter. That's not an accident, right? The nuclear industry is prolific with propaganda. It's constant all day, every day, and we can't come close to it. We can't uh, we can't possibly cover it all. We can just cherry pick the stories that have obvious meanings and implications. Sparking Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Solana, and crypto price panics. World's largest asset manager has pulled the trigger what one closely watched analyst has called nuclear winter for alternative monetary. Russia's colonel predicts a nuclear war with NATO could begin. Well, you got to have that, like, it's because it's, it's easy to solve these types of problems for NATO. And all you got to do is when your country is out parading around all their nuclear missiles, you drop one on them. <laughs> they don't exist no more. And they got bombs. Like Castle Bravo was equal to a thousand Hiroshima's. That's a nuclear war. That's, if if Russia and Ukraine fires five hundred Hiroshima bomb fifteen kiloton bombs. I'm sorry, uh, Nagasaki. 15 kiloton, because Nagasaki is plutonium, and all the bombs currently we have are based on plutonium, which it doesn't exist in nature. It's not created by the sun. It's not stardust. It's anthropogenic man-made isotope, and it's lethal to everything but replicating cells. Can you ever imagine that the entire Baltic Sea could be loaded with our mines, nuclear mines? We might dump so many mines, it would take you 10 years to demine de it if you still had the capacity and the means to do so after. So this is a war against humanity. It's a war against common sense. It's a war against progress. That's what a war is. It destroys a country. Because it's absurd. The military-industrial complex can't make a living by not destroying the country. The only way the military-industrial complex can make a living is they got to destroy a country. They gotta get and they gotta do it regularly because the, what are they gonna do with their old inventories? Because they're always producing new weapons and new inventories. Well, the only thing that makes sense is the war, because war you destroy all the machinery, all the tanks and everything else. That's great for the nuclear industries or the military industry. And the weapons producer. That's the best thing that can happen is you destroy their tanks. Now you gotta the, the military gotta buy more tanks. The best thing you can do is use the weapons because the military now got to buy more weapons because the tanks are firing weapons. You got to fill the tank back up with weapons. The biggest user of fuel on the planet is the military. The jet fighters, their planes, their armies, their navies, just their satellites it uses up all the precious metals on the planet to get them up in the sky. It's just one big stupid... And at this time and age, this generation, my goodness, we got no excuse for saying we we don't know better. Israel, Israeli's nuclear weapons should be investigated, said Turkey's president. And that's an understatement. They're, they're, they're worse way to investigating them like you do with North Korea. What you've done in North Korea, every person on the planet should hang their heads in shame. 
UN's first, because UN used to be the League of Nations, when they changed their name after Hiroshima and Nagasaki to United Nations, their first call was to go and destroy North Korea because North Korea couldn't fight back. And North Korea, how many people has North Korea attacked in the last 70 years? Oh, that's right, nobody. And who's the biggest threat worldwide according to UN? North Korea. Why is UN scared of North Korea? Because they killed millions of them. They dropped more bombs in North Korea than they did in the Second World War combined. They burnt down every village in North Korea. North Korea has every right to hate UN and the countries that are part of it. UN shouldn't exist. You should hate UN. The Israeli administration is acting like spoiled child of the West. No, it's acting like insidious monsters. They're completely unrational. They're not spoiled child. They're irrational completely. And they've been like that since they existed. Is obliged to compensate for the damage it has caused. Oh, you, well, they should be, many of them should be arrested for crimes against humanity. What they're doing is simply crimes against humanity. There's, I don't know how else you can describe it. Israel has launched relentless air and ground attacks on the Gaza Strip, hospitals, residents, houses of worship. First off, does anybody really think that Israel would be doing this right now? If Gaza had the same amount of jet fighters and 4,000 tanks and a navy and was the fourth biggest weapon producer on the planet and had 350,000 well-armed soldiers and, a, and an economy that where everybody is not starving to death for decades, anybody really believe Israel can win a real war? They're only used to fighting people that can't fight back. They've never fought anybody that can fight back. And Hamas, of course, shouldn't exist. And using Hamas to justify 5.5 million Palestinian refugees before this, is they have to give up 5.5 million refugees, but they can't get at the 10,000 Hamas. Does anybody believe that Hamas is, in, is invisible? Is Israeli, obviously. Nuclear decommissioning market is set to boom. Yeah. Nuclear worldwide is set to boom. Decommissioning. Well, they, they expect, you know, uh, Donna Ray, for instance, the fuel reprocessing site in the United Kingdom, just actually in Scotland, I believe, will take 315 years. So the skills you're learning there, you can't transfer anywhere else because most of them will get sick and die of cancer that are learning. Because it's going to take you 315 years to decontaminate a site. It's because everybody's been sick from radiation exposures. Dispute continues around California's last nuclear plant. It's not a dispute. They refuse to build something to replace Diablo Canyon. They've done this over and over. We've covered it over and over and over. Nuclear plants get extensions because there's nothing to replace it. More than a year after California endorsed the proposal to extend the lifespan of its last nuclear plant, discontinue, disputes continue to swirl around the safety and whether a billion in public financing for the extension could be in jeopardy even if the electricity is needed in the dawning age of renewables. Renewables have been around. There's not the dawning age in the renewables. The renewables have never been given an opportunity. The only renewables we're talking about originally are geothermals 24 hours a day. And, and it's completely harmless. And so the reason that Diablo Canyon is because they didn't build anything to replace it. They could have built, they had all the money already from the taxpayers, the ratepayers sitting there. They could have built the geothermals and they're in a perfect spot for it on top of that. The U.S. Air Force wants to see some atomic motors for future spacecraft. Take the $34 million Lockheed Martin and give us a uranium fission engine for electricity heat propulsion. Uranium fission. Not fusion, but fission. And the fusion, of course, I think there's a few stories today about fusion. I've lost track because the last number of weeks have been pretty rough. Lockheed Martin has been awarded 
but I'm true to the faith. If I wasn't sick, I would have been here five days a week. And just because I wasn't here five days a week don't mean I won't soon be back five days a week. Um, I don't have a right to take time off unless I'm so sick I can't do it, right? Lockheed Martin has been awarded $33 million by the U.S. Air Force Research Laboratories. They get awarded constant monies like that for all kinds of projects. The nuclear industry don't. It got to come out and and do its scumbag dance. Oxfordshire Nuclear Center opens new Culham facility because they, they're going to need thousands of workers. In it. And look at the stupid robot. The minute those robots goes into a hot zone, you can never get near them again. Not only that, electronics in there will die right away quicker than the conventional robots they're trying to use that dies right away. It's so disgusting to see them with robot dogs. It really is. It's despicable to see them do that. And so they want, you know, we've covered a lot of these stories because of um, the two new nuclear plants they're building that are, what, four times over budget and they haven't even got the foundations landed. So they're they're going to take all the high school children and convert them into nuclear slaves. And then the UK Atomic Energy Authority, which is not very old, it's like five years old or something, literally the worst thing they ever created in the United Kingdom was that a lot. They haven't decommissioned anything. They're the first thing from an authority. They're full of the old uh, redneck nuclear industries to deliver fusion energy for future generation. And their plants are surrounded by great big farms, as far as the eyes can see. They're surrounded by farms. By the way, consider liking, subscribe, and take that notification bell. I don't believe it works. Move to update nuclear gravity bombs such a strange story. What is? They don't need gravity bombs. Why do they need gravity bombs when they got all these smart bombs? They can target nu devastating nuclear bomb map shows impact new weapons would have on the European cities. Again, these maps always downplay every facet of it, of the reality of these bombs. The radioactive fallout will cover half the planet, and and contaminate everybody and all the species in that fallout zone. The U.S. Department of Defense has revealed that it's working on a new range of nuclear bombs to threaten deterrent of adversaries and assurance of allies. 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 Again, right, that, they're, they're the only thing that's important. Nothing else is important. Everybody else can get sick and die. They couldn't care less. As long as they get their billion dollar toys and budgets and our 90 foot 90 percent of the money that goes to this industry goes to administration and it's done through stealing it's not you know like man hours this is strictly about looting so they need all these shell games so that they can loot the system that's what all this is strictly about and so it's not that they might do it they're going this is this is normal. This is a yearly thing. You see these same stories with different faces. And that's the system, right? And the previous generation took their money and ran. Their children got the job. They'll take the money and run. Then their children will get the job. They'll take the money and run. And that, that has been going on for many generations, for 80 years now. There's an incredible industry of just the secrecy. You'll never know their names or their faces or anything about them, but they've been around since the very inception of nuclear. And they got spies on all the scientists, and then they got spies on all of those spies, and they got spies on all of those spies. And we're talking about tens of thousands for each lot of spies. This has been going on for 80 years. What they call a is known as a shadow government, basically, and they have enacted all kinds of laws that you you're not even allowed to know exist. 
that protects them and gives them uh, diplomatic immunity from the crimes they're committing. So about 23 times the explosive-powered nuclear bomb dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Uh, well, none of these bombs are equivalent to Hiroshima because Hiroshima was a uranium bomb. All of these are plutonium bombs. So slightly and much more insidiously, poisonously, than the Hiroshima-type bombs. And at the uh, Castle Bravo on the Bikini Islands in the 60s, or late 50s, uh, was a thousand Nagasaki bombs. So what's the big whoop about 23 times? Because they're just using tritium to give it that extra power. Like an extra... It's the whole story about the nuclear industry, when you look at it, the scams are so obvious. And there's no descending voices. They just buy them off. And because I refuse to be bought off, and to the point of where I'm bankrupt, and I remind people that you're going to have to to support me, you got to do it. Like, what I'm doing, I can do so much more, but I don't have the support. The industry has attacked everybody that ever tried to support me. And they won. Flat out won. They got nothing better to do, and they got thousands of them to do it, and they're really good at it. And I'm, I'm struggling f um, with just a couple of supporters, and they can't keep it up. UK and US sign partnerships on nuclear fusion. It's different from fission. Fusion is the fabled nuclear, and that's one of the biggest money pits. There's around 18 new companies that started up in the last couple of years alone, fusion, and they all raised money in the billions. And none of them got any hope. And all their designs are based on a 1904 design. There's no innovation. There's there's no uh, right. There's there's nothing new coming on board. It's always the old narrative. And 90% of it goes to administration. And it seems to be this inbreeding we're seeing, where the scientists and in nuclear industries still get their children an education on taxpayers' money and then get them a job in the fusion industry, which doesn't have to bear any results and hasn't for over 50 years. And the biggest joke in the fusion industry, of course, is they're always 50 years away, right? No matter when it is, ah, another 50 years we'll have it cracked. And so there's no incentive for them to come up with solutions, right? There's no euphoria behind this so-called movement. It's not a movement. It's a scam, right? It's, a, it's payback for the nuclear act, the scumbag nuclear industry. Their children get these jobs, payback for being scumbags for their whole life. But they do it willingly. They'll do it for free. They're, they're, they're sadistic by nature. And so by putting all your top academics and resources and precious metals into an industry that's not going to come to fruition, you deny the technology that exists that supersedes this in common sense and is despised by these very people and is shanghaied for other purposes. Under the agreement, UK and US scientists will come together to address technical challenges and share nuclear fusion research and development facilities. The US and the UK nuclear scientists is like the two horns of the devil. And you're going on the same head, and that head is nothing but evil and contempt for you and the eight million species. That's the only way. And Lucifer, quite appropriately, announced his forthcoming nuclear blast album. So the only way they figured they can stand out was name themselves Lucifer. The band was started up with a girl, or whatever the creature is. And there's, there's tons of towns there. Do we, we got down here on the East Coast, we have like five bands on every street, basement bands, and they're all reasonably, and many of them are very, very good. They're a dime a dozen. And well, they're cheaper than that. And so their idea is just death metal 
and Lucifer and Satan. And, like there's so many of these out there, and they, a lot of them will succeed, right? You know, if your nuclear blast is putting you up on a pedestal, and they are, they're going to succeed. But that's only to promote and influence the most vulnerable of society, the children that will gravitate towards this kind of music, so they can get a make a paycheck, right? They're only doing it for a paycheck. They're not devil worshippers or anything else. They're just doing it for a paycheck. That's their little niche. And the people that participate in it are going to be very low IQ like them. And check out their single at the mortuary. So re really, like, when you write that kind of music, it you got the IQ of a shoe. Centrica makes a move for stake in sizable seed nuclear power plant. I don't suppose you happen to notice all the farms around these places. They're going to train all the children. There's like 50,000 children expected to, over the next decade to be trained to work there and build this disease factory because it's hemorrhaging radiation. Once the fuel pools get... Uh, the fuel, then they're going to boil off that water into the farmland constantly. And Sellafield, so size well. And then Sellafield looks, in fact, if you look at size well, it looks just like a size well and Sellafield, that's Sellafield. And so Sellafield has a meltdown in 1957. It's still melting down today. And it's around 8 million liters a day from a mixed oxide fuel meltdown still hemorrhaging into the ocean each day. And that's been conveniently omitted from the, the, the narrative worldwide on nuclear and they're not trying to solve it, and they have no intentions of coming up with a solution. And so again, you see the robot, right? Like, first off, the minute the robot goes into a hot zone, you can never get near it again. That robot has never been in a hot zone. They wouldn't be standing alongside of it, right? And to them, that's just a toy. That's, that's who they are. They're, they're children. They're literally children. And... All of these farms should be closed. None of these farms should be operational. The, the plants are hemorrhaging radiation into the environment. Why are almost every nuclear power plant surrounded by farms? And I can guarantee you, the minute you accept the truth is the minute you start realizing how incredibly evil and, I, I, you know, you got to come up with a new word for that kind of evilness. It's, it's a whole different level of evil because of all the diseases possible with radioactive fallout, all the illnesses and injuries. Your immune system is compromised, so you're more susceptible to pathogens and viruses. So eating food from around these disease factories that are hemorrhaging, they're hemorrhaging radiation. And they will, like they close down right now on the air. Cellafield is actually closed right now. But it will be hemorrhaging radiation for a thousand years. You can never put that genie back in the bottle and that the food is shipped out of there regularly. These are very productive farms. And it's been going on since the 50s at that particular site. And now the new site, Sizewell, will be doing this, has been doing the same thing for the same length of time, except now it's guaranteed to do it for another 60 or 70 or years, and then another 100 years to allegedly decommission the site. You can't decommission the site. Grizzlies coach Taylor Jenkins goes nuclear on NBA. And the word nuclear gets thrown around. And that's the nuclear industry friendly journalist that'll use those particular narratives to indoctrinate children to think of nuclear as sports, right? Pacific Island nations express concern over Fukushima water release. Like it's, it seems impossible that somebody would would suggest because th what they're alluding to with that narrative 
is that nothing got out of the buildings until August the 24th of this year. Right, so they're suggesting that never happened when you see a headline like that. I'm not suggesting it, that's what they're insisting that nothing happened. So they're insisting reactor three didn't melt down, reactor four didn't melt down, right? They're insisting reactor three didn't melt down. They're insisting reactor one didn't melt down. They're insisting reactor two didn't melt down. But reactor one melted down. Reactor two, 100% fuel pools are all melted down. Reactor three, obviously, is melted down. The fuel pools are gone. Reactor four, obviously, is melted down. The fuel pools are gone. It might not be so obvious to you, but it's obvious to anybody in the industry. And it might not be obvious to you for unit one, but it's very obvious to anybody in the know or in the industry that that reactor and the fuel pools are gone. And to each of these, in comparison to churn, to all nuclear reactor meltdowns worldwide combined don't add up to one of these buildings. And there's four of those buildings that you need to put into that equation because that is an equation. I've done that again, did I? My apologies. Just turn that volume down so I don't do it to you again if I accidentally click it. So they're not raising concern, they're just morons or well brainwashed citizens, but not critical thinkers. They're, they're just accepting the nuclear industry and by proxy of Japanese words that there's no meltdown, but there's unequivocally multiple nuclear meltdowns. We've never seen nothing like this before in human's history. And they've done a wonderful job of covering up, quite proud of themselves of destroying anybody's ability to come up with a solution. He leads to Pacific, Brown who currently cheers the Pacific Island Islands Forum said Thursday there were strong concerns raised by the forum leaders for the significance, which some of them are from the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute, for goodness sakes, potential threats and contamination to the health and security of the Blue Pacific. Potential? So how can they not know that? And how do we get them, because I can't seem to reach any of them, how do we get them to look at these pictures so they can say, well, oh shit, it's already gone. That's all he needs to see. How can they pretend that doesn't exist? That's how good the nuclear industry is, see? The only thing that the nuclear industry wasn't counting on was that, well, they, they, they were counting on, they control the media and they control the universities and they control the key positions in the government. Uh, but they, they were so much better at that. They've done way better than they could hope. There's so many of them that they control everything. No dissenting voices allowed whatsoever. And normally I could stream this show live. I can't even do that anymore. And not because I have strikes on my account, it's because nuclear industry just hacked the shit out of me. And my, my, um, my I can't stream from this studio, from this uh, IP address. And I don't have the ability to work around it. I don't have the funds to figure it and come up with a solution. You know, I've, I've done everything. I tried, I've come after the research expeditions from every angle, and, and quite a few of them failed. And failed pretty miserably. I never ever stopped. I just ran out of um, the ability to keep doing it. But I've, I came at this every way, and every way that I approached it, I succeeded enough to show that we have destroyed the ecosystem, 100%. And, but everybody that publicly supported me was under siege for extended periods until they stopped supporting me. Not every, there's a couple still left, just two or three people, and I can't run the operation anymore. So essentially, I feel I failed. But only because I don't, I have liquidated all my assets a long time ago to keep this operation moving forward, and ran into money many, many times. And I, 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 I know that comes with the territory, right? 
And so all the money that I did raise got invested into equipment and in the last couple of years in the tools because I knew I wouldn't be able to afford in the near future to fix things. And I knew everything was breaking down because I've been at it a long time. And so I was very fortunate to gather up the majority of the tools. And if my health didn't decline the way I did, I could have done so much better. But my health went downhill. We had the breakdowns. We dealt with them. But my health was so bad I couldn't do it on my own, is what I'm saying. Despite the fact I gathered up a lot of tools, I, my health had declined severely. And a uh, prime example of that was I had three heart attacks in February and seven stents put in. And then the recovery after that has been brutal for me. And a few little breakdowns have destroyed my ability to do the research. We got 17 trips on the ocean this year, or 18, I can't remember. I think it's 17. And we've seen all the seabird colonies, which is only a couple left, the species, migratory, 46 million migratory birds didn't show up again this year, which means they're not going to show up ever. They're gone. But the residential species, the comorants, which are not supposed to be residential species, but are here, and um, and uh, the seagulls, the seagulls are, and also the, there's a proper name, I can't remember. We call them tickalasses on the East Coast, but that's not the proper name. They're like little seagulls. Uh, those colonies never had any eggs at all. And the seagull population was maybe 4 to 10% of eggs. And some of them were relayed their eggs. We know the, the puffin colonies all failed, complete failure. That only came out uh, this month or the end of the last month. And that the puffins had actually laid, re, uh, laid their eggs and they failed too. Nuclear warheads aimed at doomsday asteroids could be a solution. Could be. Yeah, and they believe and believe and could. These are conjectures, right? And yeah, you know, nuclear warheads might be able to do something in that capacity, absolutely. But the whole process of the nuclear warheads has already doomed us to an extinction long before the asteroids get here. from just the radioactive folly from the emissions. Wrestling heralds and villains bring nuclear winter to Liverpool. So nuclear winter gets thrown around a lot, don't it? But nuclear winter is currently ongoing. And it looks like this. The radioactive fallout, you can't see it or smell it or hear it or feel it or touch it or pick it up or throw rocks at it or perceive it but it covers the whole planet in a visible snowstorm that never goes away and everything and everybody breeds it in and ends up getting sick and quality of life dissipates or denigrates the generations and increments over time until nothing is reproducing. That's what we're seeing. That is nuclear winter, an icy Armageddon, atomic. And so you can just smell a nuclear winter and you just smell nuclear. And so they... They make sure to get enough people there to make it worthwhile for the athletes to, to play their part. But it's all about promoting the nuclear facets. Eh? The barren wasteland of America's uranium ghost towns inside long, the remains of the mining outpost Jeffrey City, Wyoming, which was all but abandoned after the end of the nuclear arms race, left with just 24 residents, one diner, and a school with two students. Once you bustling down the, the Navajo have around 15,000 abandoned mine shafts on their land, the natives' land, and all the tailings and chemicals got left behind, of course. That's what nuclear is. It just, wherever it goes, it destroys everything. That's the norm. That's its legacy constantly. And the minute you start researching nuclear legacy, that's all you're going to actually see. It's notorious. It just throws everything away like a paper towel and moves on to the next community that don't know any better. 
In the era of nuclear power, pesticides, and toxic environment, India, India has streets of children that are just unbelievable disabilities from nuclear um, poison. A word from mind-boggling Hinkley Point Marine Engineering Project. The nuclear power plants, they need a, a million gallons a minute each for each reactor, rather. And so each reactor needs a million gallons. And so a glass of, of seawater would have a billion creatures. And um, 75 to 100 million of them would be the phytoplankton, the basis of the food chain, the oxygen chain, the carbon sequestering chain. And so there's 16 million glasses, 16 million billion creatures in a minute are destroyed in a reactor, 1,440 million a day. So 1,440 times 16 billion, or 16, 16 million times a billion, then multiply that by 1,440. And eggs and larvae and everything else is destroyed each day. And there's 420 nuclear plants worldwide, not counting the military and universities and everything else. Highly complex engineering scheme. I mean, like, uh, I can't even remember the other plant. There's. Yeah, I can't remember the name of it for some reason. My brain is frozen. Just one of those big nuclear plants they're building in the United Kingdom is the biggest construction project in human history on the entire planet. Hinkley Point C. And if you, every piece of metal, every pe everything on the site is inspected three different times by three different agencies to be the best of the best material. If they put any of this effort in the geothermal, they wouldn't even look at nuclear. They wouldn't even consider nuclear. These are some of the world's heaviest lifting vessels, and they're the largest, which are the size of football pitches, 100 by 300 feet. They lowered onto the seabed six joint intakes, and there's six of these intake pipes, and that's what they need to cool the reactors full speed, big jet turbines blowing water around the reactor to keep it cool so it doesn't run away and melt down. Russia train carrying mysterious white powder substance derails after sabotage explosion. Mysterious white power. D again, this is British. Whenever it comes to British media, why, why are they so disgusting? There's this tradition of being a scumbag if you're a journalist in the United Kingdom, you can only be a scumbag. You can't be a journalist. There isn't, a, and we don't really see what a, we don't know what a journalist is anymore. We don't have a, any examples we can point to. Uh, all we see is public relation firms, and most of them will tell you that's who they are. They're public relation firms. There's no such thing as a journalist anymore. And if they, if they claim they're a journalist, then they're a very well disciplined public relation firm. Scientists say the sun is smaller than we thought. By a few hundreds of a percent or, or a few dozen miles. So, but they can't, they can't come up with a solution for geothermal, but they can work that or can they? They plan to join the Red Sea with the Mediterranean, an alternative to the Suez Canal. So that's what they're doing in Palestine, right? They need to get rid of Palestine so they can put their version of the Suez Canal through because Palestine is in their way. Remember the old days, the stories from the railway barns would come to a settler's land. That was where they wanted to lay their train tracks. And if they didn't take $20 an acre, which was a lot of money back then, and leave, they just killed all the women and children and the animals and eat the animals and just build right on through it. That's, that's exactly what we're seeing with Israel, right? 
The idea is to cut a canal through the Israeli-controlled Negev Desert, right alongside of uh, the Demora nuclear disease factory plant. From the tip of the Gulf of uh, and the eastern arm of the Red Sea that juts into Israel's southern tip and southwest Jordan to the east Mediterranean coast, creating an alternative route to the Egyptian-controlled Suez Canal that started from the western arm of the Red Sea and passed to the southeast Mediterranean through the northern Sinai Peninsula, where Israelis during the Yom Kippur War had caught around 1,800 Egyptian conscripts. And they made them dig trenches, and they made them get down in the trenches, and they machine gunned them. And then they just buried whatever was left alive with the bulldozers. And still sits there today, right? They actually had an American ship at the same time off the coastline with nuclear weapons. They had jet fighters was going to turn the Sinai Peninsula into a sheet of glass with the American... Because Israel obviously controls America. Like they control the politicians, you control America, right? And it's pretty evident what's going on. A century-old ocean heat tech could supply islands with endless clean energy. It's kind of a geothermal, but through the ocean. And uh, this is a very stable system, by the way, that we're talking about. 140-year-old technology is seeking to make a comeback known as the ocean thermal energy conversion. 140-year-old technology has been suppressed Anything since the nuclear industry existed, it tried to suppress everything so to have no competition. And that's why you see the demonization of oil and gas and coal is is that's all done by the nuclear industry itself. And then they call themselves clean energy, see? OTEC and they like doing things in increments over decades. That's their their norm. Harnesses the temperature difference between the sun warmed surface water and the cold depths of the ocean provide a continuous cost-effective supply of clean energy for small islands and coastal nations. Which is fantastic, isn't it? Nuclear industry will scuttle that the first chance it gets. Traditionally, the system uses warm surface seawater to evaporate a low boiling point fluid like ammonia, which produces a vapor that spins a turbine to generate electricity. And cold water from the deep in the ocean is then used to cool the vapor and condense it into a liquid again so the cycle can continue. And this means it doesn't need to use any fossil fuels like oil, gas, or coal to produce electricity. But the geothermal, if you marry geothermal up to this technology that they're talking about, problem solved, right? Because geothermal, you can count on the, the, the temperature differential to be a lot more significant. So it'd be way more effective. So this technology that they're talking about, 140-year-old technology, instead of using it on the ocean, should be used on land. And instead of the temperature inversion that they're talking about, you just use geothermal. Doesn't that make more sense? And it has potential to produce far more useful, affordable energy can be generated from other renewable sources. Think about that statement. And currently only two pilot scale plants in Hawaii and Japan are connected to the grid, generating enough power for a few hundred homes. So any small community then could take geothermal and exploit that technology. Microbial community dynamites and cycling of plutonium and iron in a seasonally stratified and radiologically contaminated pond. And this was a study that just came out on the 11th of November. Another important metal affected by iron cycling is plutonium. This is a radioactive redox sensitive element found in some freshwater marine ecosystems because of nuclear testing, nuclear production facilities are planned and accidental, planned, planned releases and accidental releases. Um,
Well, that's neptunium. That decays to plutonium, by the way. But I got a plutonium model here, I think. Not think, I know I do, but can I find it? There it is. I got it. So when they say it's found in some lakes and fresh waters, no, no, no. It's actually found in all of them. That plutonium model is, to your left is based on 20 days, the 31st of March. And the one to the right is April 1st, so it's 21 days of radioactive fallout of plutonium. But the models of the Neptunium-239 dispersals, that decays to plutonium-239. So to say planned and releases is a better way to put it. And plutonium, and there's many, many different, all of them are very deadly to humans. What Gaza might look like the day after the war, well, it already looks like the day after a war. They've been doing it for uh, since 1948, right? 78 years. And so now they want to clear it out. Not, not, well, they want to get rid of the, the Palestinian, the Muslims, because the Bible says that um, the world will turn against the Jews and that God will come down and destroy the world, only the Jews themselves that are in Palestine or in Jerusalem city will go to heaven. But if you're outside of Jerusalem city, you don't go to heaven. So they don't want anybody else in Jerusalem, only the Jews. Which And, ty and typically we're talking about the orthodoxic Jews, ultra-orthodoxy Jews. Israel intelligence ministry produced a chilling documentary that advocated the Israeli move all of the Gaza Palestinian population and forcibly resettle them in the Egyptian Sinai Peninsula. Well, that's so they can build a new Suez Canal right through Palestine. And that's what they're probably going to do. There's nobody going to, there's no country out there will oppose them. They've never fought a real war, and they, they won't either. Right? They're, they only fight an entrapped, impoverished um, country that can't fight back. Fourteen hundred quakes uh, recorded in Iceland in twenty-four hours. Iceland shut the f uh, Blue Lagoon, the famous Blue Lagoon, a popular tourist spot known for its geothermal spas, after experiencing a surge in seismic activity. That's not a surge; that's craziness. Has a population of four hundred thousand and boasts six hundred natural hot springs and drawing its heat and energy from abundant geothermal. It's a really amazing story when you look at it. Japanese police increasingly using date rape drug testing kits to Japanese men. The Japanese men, very, it's very difficult to convict them of rape, by the way. And very difficult just to get it in the court. And it's, it's, it's normal. It's a rape culture. And you can find all kinds of documentaries about it online. It's a rape culture. And the date rape drug is perfect for the coward co culture. And so like, I call it the coward culture in Japan. And if you look at Fukushima, they closed down 54 nuclear plants, right? None of them went to work at Fukushima. Tens and tens of thousands of workers and only the homeless and the destitute and the victims of society, immigrants that don't speak the language, were at Fukushima. Uh, so this, this was a, uh, a makeup company, a women's uh, makeup and perfume company, slashes their profits, underwater release. Well, they, they've never stopped releasing the radiation, though. The, the Buildings are actually long gone, right? So they, they've been poisoning everybody all along, see? Because the buildings have been long gone. So there, it's only now that, and the only time they're tritium, right? They refuse to acknowledge that 
anything got out of the building. They're saying all that is stored in a thousand tanks. There's only 2.2 grams of tritium got out of these buildings, and there's four of them, not just two of them. South Korea is facing a Fukushima seafood dilemma. And South Korea is the one that came out in July the 13th, 20, this year, 2023, with the new version that it was nothing got out of the buildings, only 2.2 grams of tritium, and that's what's in the 1,000 tanks. Which we might, I got a story about that coming up, and we probably will get to that fairly soon, but it looks like South Korea was about the Alps uh, story that came out last night. South Korea is facing a Fukushima seafood dilemma. In August, Japan released treated radioactive water into the ocean from the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant. Well, no, it's been releasing water into the ocean nonstop. To suggest, and this is the problem where they're suggesting in August. All right, and so they worked the country up on purpose to get them out to protest the tritium releases from the tanks. Because I showed you the story at the very beginning from the July the 13th, where a South Korean professor of nuclear and quantum engineering claimed it was like three grams of sugar and was equal to 2.2 grams of tritium, and only 0 0.062 grams would be released a year, which is equal to 1 16th of a gram a year being released. Now, the buildings had millions of pounds, each building, and they're long gone. And so this industry has to be stopped at all costs. You, you cannot let this industry exist. You have to do everything in your power to stop this industry. This industry is the death of society, humanity, and the 8 million species, just the emissions. We don't need a nuclear war. We have already condemned the planet. So it's time to fight back. You've got no choice. And because the... They are shipping so much food from the nuclear wasteland, they've compromised the integrity of the human DNA worldwide now. And that's, that's not an accident. They never waste a crisis, and so they went for it. And they also destroyed all the species, the ability for the species to exist. And what you see is the reproduction cycle of all the species have nosedived and you can trace all of it back. All of these assertions I've made, you can trace back to March 11, 2011, the post-Fukushima event on the entire ecosystem, the biosphere and the species and the planet is unassailable, it's incontestable. Armenian agricultural products will be particularly interesting to the Japanese markets. Armenian agricultural products. Well, literally anything not grown in Japan is a huge hit in Japan. Just because the media denied don't mean the people do. We talk, Canadians say radioactive water will hurt the environment. Again, right, they, they only publish stories that promote their, their latest, greatest version of what happened at Fukushima. But if, if you were to go up and ask these people the same question and then show them that picture and say, well, that's from, my apologies, and say that, that that's from 2011, 12, and 13. Well, that's what it looked like in 2013. And in 2013, they claimed they were actually in the building, right? So the... You're asking people about the nuclear that has already taken place, but you're not acknowledging it that already taken place. The emissions. Tritium is, is, is literally the last one you're worried about, and you better worry about it, though. Cancer diagnoses in young doctors at the same lab in China. But the cancer rate share in Canada out of 100,000 doctors is like 90%. And Fukushima plays a big hand in that. Records of tritium, which is 3H. Notice how the, the Fukushima never mentions the word 3H because that's man-made tritium. There's natural tritium created by the sun and uh, particles in the upper atmosphere. But then there's man-made tritium, which is tritium 3H. 
and 36 chlorine, which is natural. Why would you put 36 chlorine in? Now, it is created in nuclear disasters. That's for sure, right? And same as 3H is created naturally, but it's also prolific after nuclear accidents. And it's prolific for many generations. And it's a very nasty isotope. But it's just one of a thousand fission products that you need to be worried about. From the Fukushima nuclear accident recovered from salt water, not saturated zones, Koryama. Koryama. Every house in Koryama City is entitled to decommissioning. Let me see if I can find that. Because that's super important. Doesn't take long to kind of forget where everything is too, I notice. Oh, I didn't over the last few weeks there's quite a few times when I didn't think I would be ever coming back. Very humbling experience to say the least. Corey Emma City, I'll find that. Maybe I won't. Oh, I'll find it. Koryama City. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Koryama City. Here we go. Now, every building in Koryama City... And I got the population numbers there for you in a second. I'll bring that up right now, actually. Koryama City has 374,000 people. 341,000 people. And has 162,000 counts per minute per square meter. So that, that should be abandoned permanently. Elementary school in Japan is using water bottles. Which is 34 miles west of Fukushima Disease Factory. Is using water bottles to shield the radiation coming from outside and other areas outside around the school building. The water bottles, the bottles are filled with water and placed inside of square boxes. which are stacked around the classroom. And it's using the water bottles to shield the radiation coming from outside. According to school, it seemed to reduce the radiation levels inside by one third. So they should, you shouldn't have children there. Every academic on the planet should be outraged. Every nuclear scientist on the planet should be just losing their minds. Every, there should be protest worldwide to move the children out of there. In a normal society, and a normal subject, that's what it would do, but nuclear is never normal. Nuclear is managed to conveniently hide behind all kinds of things. Residents of Koryama City has been concerned about the high amount of radioactive materials that have been found around their town. Koryama City, every house there is entitled to be decommissioned. The United Nations Scientific Committee uh, unclear on the effects of the atomic radiation. This was the first year, one year later, absorbed doses red bone marrow in Japan for the first year. And so they downplayed every facet of it, but they acknowledged per square meter, they only acknowledged cesium-137, and, which, and so that road there, you see all these communities, Minima, Soma City, would actually be way higher than that if you actually, we know it's 20 million becquels per kilogram. So you have to multiply with 64 to get a square meter. And these numbers are based on square meters. And you can't just have cesium. So 341,000 people, every house there is entitled to be decontaminated, but you can't decontaminate a house. So every house is entitled to be torn down put in a nuclear dump for a million years. Why would you leave people in that community? Why would you leave people in all of these communities? Why would you do that? And that's just a fraction, right? That's just a fraction of the communities. You gotta go all the way from A, B, C, D, E, F, G to get down to K. There's H, I, J, K, 
Elemental PQR, STUV. So, regular tritium, 3H, and 36 chlorine, which is created by nuclear meltdowns in prolific amounts, but shouldn't be part of the equation because there's so many other isotopes. Singles will drown out the chlorium single and the 3H single. In the unsaturated zone at Koryama, unsaturated zone, there is no unsaturated zone because it's 162,000 becquerels a kilogram or a square meter. This is your third row from the left, square meter. So the third row from the left is 162,842. So there is no unsaturated zone. And so whoever done the study, right, whoever produced that study, should lose their degrees. It's because they're suggesting that the only thing there is the tritium 3H and that the chlorine is proof. And that the numbers they're talking about are quite frightening numbers, 1.4, 10 to the power of 13. So 13 zeros and times and 1.4. And 2.0 times 10 to the power of 12 atoms per square meter of tritium and chlorine. But the reality of it is, for every cesium-137, which is that row right here, numbers, it's going to be 100 times strontium-90. After the first 1,000 days, strontium-90 peaks. And then the peak is for tens of thousands of days. So they're still going strong, right? And the reactors are still melting down that, are, that weren't atomized in the aerosol into the environment. So it's completely dishonest. Fukushima ALP systems safety gains international acceptance. Now this was green nuclear. Green new clean. Green nuclear though, isn't it? That's what it actually says, green nuclear. And that's quite the rabbit hole when I went down that rabbit hole. Unfortunately, I'm not up to par yet. And so I'm going to do a separate video on that site because they deserve that kind of attention. So again, Japan, Chinese, South Korea, they forgot Taiwan for some reason, are all working together. Taiwan's considered like the, the, little, the little brother they don't want taken along, but it's still part of the gang. Sort of, so ultimately, so this was written by Green Nuclear. You get it? Green Nuclear. Pretty despicable organization. And this was, uh, this was Yahoo. Uh, can't, one of the, I can't remember the sections of Yahoo. Maybe I took a screen capture after that. Yeah, there it is. Finance at Green Nuclear. And the whole story, again, is to promote nuclear. And look at tritium. The, f the minute they mention the word tritium is the minute that you should have no conversation with these people whatsoever. According to Green, according to, now Green Nuclear wrote it. So according to Green Nuclear, who wrote it, an organization promoting sustainable and green energy that has been monitoring the latest developments regarding Fukushima water releases. So I had a plane flying pretty close. Let me just turn the volume off for a second to give you a break. I'm not sure if it comes through on your end, but to suggest that nothing on your tritium came out of that building means that green nuclear is your enemy. That's your that's one of your number one enemies. And they wrote a very long, detailed story based on tritium, not based on the actual emissions. It's completely dishonest. And that the second I went and looked at them, empowering change, making informed, sustainable choices for a better, better planet, green energy, is nuclear, green nuclear. And... I checked out one of their videos, 
And of course, I'm under siege in the comment section. As every video on nuclear, you'll see trolls that are dedicated to attacking me. And they're not lucid in any sense of the conversation whatsoever. They're, they're strictly about the pro-nuclear industry. They're, they're not trying to have a real conversation, these organizations. And then the guys that have a site dedicated to attacking me will show up in every video. And that's an attack upon me. They're using my name. And then they're coming in and saying that nuclear is beautiful, but they got my name attached to their site, right? And so now I look like I'm a pro-nuclear to the average person who doesn't know any better. And um, not only that, they incite violence against me a lot of the times. And so I'm very worried that someone is going to kill me because of what that, whoever owns that site is doing constantly. Is they're spreading all this hate and b me... I'm getting associated because you're using my name. I've complained to YouTube probably 15 times about that site. And they've been around for a very long time. They're very prolific. Their comments are never... And so let's talk about, for a minute, let's talk about the ELP system so you can appreciate what's really going on. So on April 21st, 2014, the Advanced Liquid Processing System, ELPS, you had yet to function reliably. Well, it didn't function at all. So they didn't filter any water in the first four, uh, three years. And, s and then the other system, the Areva system, in August 12, 2014, three and a half years later, had been unused and kept it operations. There's no filtration whatsoever. Nothing. There was no filtration. Uh, 100,000 becquels per cubic centimeter radioactivity, and it's not tritium we're talking about, per cubic centimeter. But the new, vision, the new story now is there's only tritium, right? Since... July 13, 2023, that story was the official story promoted by the International Atomic Energy Agency in proxy, everybody in the nuclear industry, everybody in the media, everybody in the universities. They rewrote history. They moved the goalpost and rewrote history. 2014, typical says groundwater bypass operation is not having effects at Fukushima Daiichi. So they're going to pump water around the site. That didn't work. Typical failed to deliver and a promise to install a fence to restrict uh, contamination from leaking into the Pacific. You can't build a fence. He said it's going to cost a billion dollars and they couldn't afford it. But you can't build a fence to stop, stop radiation. Uh, like the, the atoms, you can put 200 million atoms in the head of a needle. You can't see it. You can't filter that. You can't. It's smaller than a water molecule. How can you filter that? You've got to capture everything. You can't filter anything. It can't be done. The ELP system couldn't work. It never could. It was designed, same as the tanks, to manipulate you into thinking that that didn't happen. To Even now, shown to you, print that out, bring it to an engineer, and ask him to find a fuel pool for you. And then, and then get busy and start working alongside me and doing the same as I'm doing. TEPCO's ice wall operation can't meet expectations. Well, there's no top, there's no bottom. And that that whole area, they flew over it. The Americans flew over it. A thousand feet above the ground in the first couple of weeks. And there were three million beckles per square meter, 20 kilometers away, up to 20 kilometers away from the site. But they're only looking at iodine-131 because that's the cover story. And it's a nasty isotope, but that's the cover story. They, they, and then they would do a mathematical equation and extrapolate the uranium, the plutonium, the americium, the neptunium, the strontiums, and everything else. But they won't acknowledge that with you. And now they have compromised the future of humanity and the 8 million species. There was a lot of people that warned you originally. The EU Energy Commissioner called Fukushima an apocalypse, that everything is under control. 
France said Japan has lost control. The French will leave the country. The Swiss said Tokyo should be evacuated for them, therefore should be evacuated for everybody else. Tokyo lost almost all control of events. Well, no, you lost all controls. There is no control. The buildings are completely gone. Nuclear report warns an apocalyptic scenario at Fukushima. Could one day be considered the start of the ultimate catastrophe of the world and the planet? Could one day be considered the start of the ultimate catastrophe of the world and the planet? And that, my friends, is the reality. Um... Uh, what was I going to say? Um, so James Lucid donated 200 last week. Thank you, James. And Stephen Young donated 50. And Mark R donated 50, 60. And um, obviously that got chewed up right away. And I'm so grateful. And it's so difficult. It's so humble to do the things I'm doing. Just, But if I don't ask, then this operation stops. If people don't support me, this operation will stop. And if I don't ask, it's guaranteed to stop. And so the most humbling thing is I have to ask people to support me. And it's humiliating, to say the least. But if I don't, I'll be humiliated if I'm not here trying. That's even more humiliating to not try. And I don't know, and I don't care what people say about me. I will defend myself, but I don't care. I am doing it. I can't change evil. And all I can do is shine a bright light and give you the documentation so you can make up your own minds. And I provide you with more than enough. And solutions. You know, geothermal is a solution. The storage, I talked about our solutions. The, the ammonia and the ocean, and convert that and put it on land with geothermal. That's a solution, right? You know, I, I've done all these research expeditions. I, I don't live in a glass jar. I wear my life on my sleeve, and it's not always going to be pretty. But I will do the best I can, as long as I can. And I will always speak out against this industry. And I'll always try to educate the population, because they deserve it. At least one honest voice. I wish there was more, and there's not. I wish I could do more, and I can't. But if you give me an opportunity, I won't let you down. Sometimes I can't beat the odds. Everything I try is on a budget and it's very difficult. And, but I never, the thing with me is I will never stop trying. I never stop caring. Hope for it. Have a great night. And uh, thank you everybody for your, any kind of support. Watching the video is a big deal. So please share it. Please like the video. Have a great day. We'll see everybody hopefully tomorrow night for a regular show. Take care.